How is we going, retro people? My name is Brad, this is Retro Style Spotlight, and this is your news, notes, history, and retro games to play for the week of November 1st, 2016. Last week's tutorial was all about the infamous Philips CDI game console that really isn't much of a game console. However, if you'd like to have an afternoon of oddity fun, then check out the description below to help you get this oddity up and running on your PC inside of Launchbox. I've talked about unreleased games several times in the past, but I never really caught a game as it's trying to find its light of day. It's usually already out and available, or soon to be out, but this one needs a bit of help. Socks the Cat is a 2D platforming game based on the Clinton's Cat? Set in Washington, D.C., Socks the Cat rocks the hill, follows the title character as he makes his way past spies, politicians, and the news media to warn the Clinton family of a stolen nuclear missile launch device. The game makes heavy use of political satire, including bosses designed as caricatures of former U.S. presidents and other political figures. The political satire was also praised by critics, although the game was otherwise found to be average. This campaign is about 7 days or so left in it at the time that this goes up on YouTube, and still needs about $10,000. I would really hate for an odd game to languish. It's safe to assume that giant and older game companies have stock of old game consoles and games just lying around in a warehouse, right? Well, when it comes to Nintendo, they actually do. While celebrating The Legend of Zelda's 30th anniversary earlier in October, they showed off a few products that most collectors have and readily know about, but few ever get to see brand new. Nintendo unboxed, that's right, unboxed an original Legend of Zelda, a Famicom and a Famicom disc system, and showed the game playing on an all completely new old stock. They even showed off a kiosk that was in retail stores at the time of the Famicom Disk System that let users take their rewritable Famicom Disk System discs and put complete games on them for a small fee. It essentially let you put a game on the disc, play it until you beat it or got bored with it, take the disc back, and put a new game inside. It's interesting to see when people, or in this case companies, have old stock that has never been touched or barely looked at in 30 years. It makes you wonder what else can be found out there, and when will it show back up? Doom is still a powerhouse first-person shooter series, coming back in full glory with Doom 4 in the modern era. However, there is still a rabid fanbase around the original two Doom games, and mods like this prove that. It's usually gimmick mods that are generally spread around with vigor, but there is a specific different reason for this mod, and that is because it is simply fantastic. The map takes about an hour to complete, but the creator has reported to have taken about 300 hours to make it. Called the Foresight, Ben, the creator says, quote, The overall concept of the four circular quadrants based around a single horizontal corridor I originally thought up in a particularly dull accounting lecture at university in 2004. It's taken quite a while for the mod to come to light, changing decades since the original vision, but there's something to be said for dedication and blowing off university classes. Quote, it ended up being so big because it just felt like it had to live up to the idea I'd been carrying around for so many years. Ben told Eurogamer. The mod is freely available to anyone interested and it requires Doom 2 to enjoy, which is often on sale but only goes for $5 full price on Steam. Now it's time for Retro Remix Song of the Week, and this week is very different than the last in that it is very calming. Called Namros Nudlib Theme, and I have no clue if that's even correct, it is off the Esther's Dream album and is a take on the Prelude of Light from Ocarina of Time. The song is specifically designed to be a soothing, mostly for children, sleepy time song. The lyrics are cute and the tone is on point, so give the song a listen if you want a calm experience.
This month in 2000, Final Fantasy IX was released in North America and is my personal favorite Final Fantasy game of all time. Final Fantasy IX is a JRPG developed and published by Square, originally for the PlayStation. Released in 2000, it is the ninth title in the Final Fantasy series and last to debut on the original PlayStation console. The game introduced new features to the series, like the Active Time event, Magnet, and a unique equipment and skill system. Final Fantasy IX's plot centers on a war between nations. Players follow a young thief named Zidane Tribal, who joins with others to defeat Queen Bran of Alexandria, the one responsible for starting the war. The plot shifts, however, when the characters realize that Bran is working with an even more threatening person called Kuja. Final Fantasy IX was developed alongside Final Fantasy VIII, but took a different approach by returning to the more traditional style of the early Final Fantasy games. Consequently, Final Fantasy IX was influenced significantly by the original Final Fantasy game, and features allusions to other titles in the series. It was released to critical acclaim and holds the highest Metacritic score of all Final Fantasy installments. Final Fantasy IX was commercially successful, selling 5.3 million units worldwide by March 31st, 2003. The game was voted the 24th best game of all time by readers of the Japanese magazine Famitsu. In 2010, it was released as a PS1 classic title on the PlayStation Network playable on the PS3 and PSP. On December 18th, 2012, the game was re-released as a part of the Final Fantasy 25th Anniversary Ultimate Box Japanese Package. Ports for iOS and Android were released in February 2016, while a port for Windows was released in April of 2016. If you are a patron that pledged to be a part of our Patreon campaign and are watching this early, then thank you very much. For those of you who pledged at the producer level role, your names are now on screen. If you are interested in seeing your name as part of Retro Style Spotlight, the tutorials, and have it be inside of the Launchbox app, then head on over to the Patreon link in the description below. At just $2 a month, you can see content like RSS early, and at the higher tiers, you start to unlock things like exclusive Discord server access, producer credits, and a personal hangout with the Launchbox team. Any dollar amount anyone pledges to our campaign is helping us create a better product on every front. So that was Richard Style Spotlight for the week of November 1st, 2016. All of the relevant links to everything you heard in this edition of RSS will be in the description below. Remember, you can sign up for a Launchbox forum account, and if Launchbox has given you a beautiful library of games, then why not purchase a premium license of Launchbox for $20 to access Big Box, which is a controller and couch-oriented version of Launchbox. The Launchbox Games Database is available for any user to contribute to as well. Jason, Carson, and I have a lot planned for our community, so if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, we're doing a tutorial video every Friday, live developer sessions, Launchbox news, Q&As, and a ton more content in the future. Let us know what you think of RSS and any feedback you may have on it. My name is Brad, the link to my channel is below, and remember, Fuchs and Geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day!